Right, so good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, and today I'm out looking for a true piece of national heritage, something that is the last of its kind uh, surviving anywhere. And I've heard it's out here in the middle of these marshes, um, rotting away year by year. So hopefully I can find something. Now I'm talking of course about a boat, but not just any boat. It's a Mersey flat, a true unsung hero of the industrial age in the northwest of England. A real workhorse of Lancashire and Merseyside. Mersey flats are characterized as deep sided double ended barges, usually depicted with sails, but more usually overlooked altogether. And like the name suggests, they are flat bottomed. Well, almost, not quite. And they were carvel built, meaning the hull planks were laid edge to edge and formed a smooth surface. But the greatest characteristic was their huge carrying capacity, with the vast majority of Mersey flat boats being able to carry up to 80 tonnes of goods. Flats on the Weaver were eventually developed that could carry three times as much. So what's important about a load of old boats? Well, quite a lot actually. It all goes back to Liverpool. And Liverpool's always been a centre of trade in the northwest of England, um, taking imports and exports from Britain, Ireland and Europe. And then of course later on North America and Africa. But by the 1700s, of course, all the towns and areas around the Mersey Basin, including all the tributaries of the Weaver and the Douglas and the Irwell, um, were all getting busy with the Industrial Revolution. And so a lot of goods, including salt and steel and coal and cotton, etc., all needed to be moved, shifted out towards the port of Liverpool and also inland as well. So first they had to make these rivers navigable as best they could which in the case of the Sankey Brook, meant reinventing an ancient idea, the canal. But there was one major problem. The River Mersey has the second highest tidal range in the UK. And at low tide, it was sometimes impractical or even impossible for large seagoing vessels to get beyond this bottleneck at the mouth. So rather than have cargo swapped from little boats to big boats when it wasn't necessary, boats were developed that were small enough to navigate the shallow waters, yet big enough to be sturdy and reliable and shift the cargo about efficiently. Right, so welcome to Spike Island, a wedge of land between the Sankey Canal and the River Mersey. Now all this was very, very, very industrial back, back in the old days. Um, <laughs> lots of... Um, ships going in and out of here there's a railway as well there was a railway and um, lots of industry but I'm not here to look at that I'm here to look at something else right as you can see the Mersey behind me is in full flood right where I am um, and I was a bit worried when I got here that I'd come at exactly the wrong time um, but I haven't because I'm looking for you can see it down here some remains of some Mersey flats which have been hulked here um, against the shore and there's one, two, three, four maybe. Let's go have a look. So these boats were completely gutted and disassembled and dragged onto the sands here decades ago um, in an effort to help prevent erosion of the land, um, which they have done to a certain extent. But as you can see, they themselves are now rotting away almost to non-existence. Um, and it's, it's fascinating to see some remains of Mersey Flats, which used to be up and down the river here all the time. There used to be hundreds of them on the Mersey and the Weaver going into Manchester, going this way and that. And there's just a smidgen of them left, a few, a little handful of them left. And a lot of them, most of them are actually here. This is it. So as you can see that the banks here are prone to erosion really badly um, because the river kind of swings a bit, it gains a bit of momentum as it comes and then narrows into the bottleneck at Runcorn. Um, so a lot of erosion going on here and you can see these, these boats are just hanging on in there. I think there's, there's about four or five I think I've counted. It's very hard to tell um, but yeah fascinating. It's just I don't know what to make of it. It's kind of exciting, but also sad at the same time. Um, but yeah, uh, not much left of them though today. 
Right, so these are the skeletal remains of Spike Island, some of the last Mersey flats around. But I'm going to go find one now which is intact almost completely. Um, but it's not here, it's in a museum. Now Mersey Flats were great not just for inland work but also for short sea trips so often they would go um, to the Furness Peninsulas or to North Wales. Anyway they were incredibly common up and down the Mersey and by 1852 there were around 400 on the River Weaver alone. They were so good at their job that they survived the coming of the railways and their numbers continued to increase all the way up until the end of the 19th century. But in the 20th century, their use began to decline drastically until at last they disappeared forever. Now, there are two surviving Mersey flats that are still intact, although not completely. The Mossdale and the Oakdale. The Oakdale is privately owned and parked up on the sands off the Cumbrian coast. So this behind me is Mossdale and it was built in 1876 and it's here at the National Waterways Museum in Ellesmere Port and it was uh, sunk, it, uh, a gentleman's just told me it was in the water for quite a number of years um, and it's just been put in this unique housing here to protect it a bit longer um, because you can see it's decayed quite a lot along the bottom there um, but it's still in shape, it's still here um, and that's just fantastic, that's amazing. Mossdale. So if I stand here you can see the decay of the hull. Now this hull is um, oak um, and pitch pine and elm I think. Um, and it's, like I say, it's, it's, all, it's very old, 150 years. Um, and that has decayed to quite an extent. Um, but yeah, the whole boat survives. It's just nice just to stand next to it to be honest with you. So Mossdale was never under sail, it was always pulled by horses and tugs um, and it traded between Ellesmere Port and Liverpool um, carrying very common goods such as margarine and other that type of thing. Um, so yeah, not a glamorous life but it survived and that is a unique thing. Um, its original name was Ruby and it was bought by another company who had a policy of naming things something Dale and therefore Mossdale became its name so Ruby originally. So her name changed in the 1920s and the company behind that uh, with this name policy also deepened her hull so she could carry the maximum load of cargo. Um, I've been told that the aft um, has been registered, I'm not sure which, <laughs> which end is the aft from looking at where, where I am. It's hard to tell from down here. Let's say it's that one. The aft is, was registered at the time for accommodation for three people or um, two adults and two children. And the four was registered for accommodation for one person as well. So it was a living vessel in which you know, people worked and lived on. Right, so I've come to the banks of the River Weaver, one of the busiest waterways for shipping in these parts in the 19th century. So, when, uh, when this river was made navigable a couple centuries ago, they built locks here to control the level of water up and down stream. Um, so what boats would do is they go from here into the River Mersey, obviously. But during neap tides, um, it was just not possible. So all the boats had to hang around pretty much here um, for days on end sometimes just waiting so they made another cut in just a short distance away um, with a lock 
uh, which kind of made this bit a bit redundant and it became a dumping ground for old boats, which is the reason I'm here. Have a walk around here. Bit of a prow, I think. Um, and there's one here. <laughs> it's very difficult to make out the shape of the boat. That's the. Yeah, could be the back. There's a piece of old boat down here with the nails still in there. That, that one there. Yeah. Uh, there's more of a metallic looking one here. Um, so you can see if you can get a close up of it. Right, so I'm quite limited here actually of what I can do because it's a bit of a, a boat graveyard this. It's really fascinating, but I'm not sure. I can't see all of it and I can't just wander in and out because it's very swampy, very muddy. I'm not sure how deep it'd fall as well. Um, so it's a bit limiting. I'm gonna keep looking. Now look at this one, this is fantastic, look at this. Obviously quite a lot of this survives um, and it's, it's amazing, such a big bulk. Unfortunately, a lot of it is still submerged. Um, so this being the, the best one I've seen so far, it's not much, <laughs> it's not much of a wreckage really um, to say that this boat graveyard holds so many. Um, so maybe this is as good as it gets. So there were two locks built here to manage the flow of water originally. Um, I'm stood actually on one of them. Uh, there it is over there. So I'm stood on the island in between the other, well, the, the two, the other one being over there. Um, so this area here would have been the other lock. Um, and that is completely overgrown and marshy. So very interesting I'm gonna have a look around but from here I can see something very interesting it's a huge rudder sticking up from the water and I think I know what that is so this massive rudder post here is the last bit of something a boat called the Gowan Burn um, and the rest of it is just completely submerged now below the silt below the reeds and the swampy water this is the only bit remaining, it's sticking up proudly still. Now this one is even better, look at that, look at it! Fantastic. Um, it kind of gets overgrown back there so... Um, I think it's it's a bit submerged, a bit decimated. But look at this. It's not the one I'm looking for though. Now Mersey Flats are truly unique boats. On the outside they appear to just be wider, longer, chunkier versions of narrowboat barges. But then you see photos like this and suddenly they appear incredibly picturesque, like they belong on the River Nile. Um, right, so this is the other lock, the one you can't see from the footpath over there. Um, and you can see the lock gate here and there's a boat 
submerged in the water here at this lock. I'm not sure if this is the one I'm looking for and it's really um, it's frustrating me a little bit. And there's one over there as well. <laughs> Which is just beautiful. Um, and there's little bits and pieces I'll go have a look at further down. Um, but I'm a bit I'm a bit lost to be honest with you as to whether I've I've seen the boat I'm after so far or I've not yet come across it. So these locks have both silted up, but not completely. Um, there's still water in both of them. And as you can see here, the channel leading to this one is very much in water. Um, that ghost, it's just a ghost ship under the water there, slowly sinking for decades, decades. So since the 1950s, when that other cutting was made to the Southwest or whatever, this became a, a boat graveyard and all these boats some of which are further down in the reeds i can't get to they've just been sinking slowly rotting away going 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 gone and like this one down here which you can still make out from where i am it won't be here very long it's just um i don't know sad but beautiful <laughs> and they're all proper working boats as well not just the little pleasure craft or the little canal boats carrying a bit of uh, lumber or whatever here there and everywhere a bit of coal these are proper big working boats the big workhorses of that 19th early 20th century so back on the footpath you can see the, the lock there now this this lock and the boat down there in the lock are a scheduled ancient monument um, which means they're very, very important to the country. Um, which, by deduction, makes this, for me, without confirmation, the one I'm looking for. So this is Daresbury. This is the oldest surviving Mersey flat anywhere. And it dates back to 1772. This boat down here, rotting away in the lock, is older than the United States of America. So it took quite a bit of time to get Daresbury scheduled an ancient monument and as you can see it's not very much good now it's a bit late um, but if this is Daresbury I'm pretty sure it is now um, you can see the, the, the front of the boat I think that's the front of the boat it's very hard to identify now is facing that way west um, and it's just very quickly submerged into nothingness but it is it's about 17 or 18 meters long 17 and a half meters long i think something like that so just from there it would have come this way definitely probably just through over there and you know what it's just a lovely thing to see this old girl i mean despite the the fact that she's just been left um in such a state um but yeah it feels very special what what a story Hi, me again. So, if this tickles your fancy, then please do check out the National Waterways Museum here at Ellesmere Port, who very kindly let me in today to film Mossdale, despite the museum actually being closed. Um, now, they've got such a fantastic collection, and it's run by the Canal and River Trust as well, so everything's taken care of with a great deal of love and affection. Um, and it's next to the Shropshire Union Canal um, and the Manchester Ship Canal. So, there's a good chance you'll actually see a working boat. Uh, while you're here so well worth it